Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 70 of my Agrarian Skies Hardcore Quest Let's Play. This game pack by Jadacat is available on the Feed the Beast launcher. So, last time, I finished up Magnetic Personality. Today, I want to finish another quest. My only options are Dirt Collection, McOries in Bragging Rights, or B Domination in Bragging Rights. Actually, I'm pretty close on B Domination. I might be able to get that one going. Let's head up here and set my QDS back to outputting. There's every possibility that I will finish that up. Let's look at how many drones I have. Hey, let's not accidentally deposit my wireless access terminal into my bag of holding. How about that, too? Okay. I see a couple of thousand drones there. No, I don't have nearly enough. I'm only... I'm way off. That's okay. So bee domination will just have to have more time as more drones breed for me. Now, Migori's I'm not going to be able to do in one episode. There's a lot to it. And in fact, given where I'm at in the series, I'm going to ask you guys, do you want me to even tackle this one at all? Because... Honestly, it's mostly a matter of look up what uh, type of plant I need to farm to make one of these items, make one of each of them. It's a lot of tedious stuff without a lot of interesting mechanics because it's all about the farming. So, what I am going to tackle is dirt collection. And if I take a look at my dirt collection... I still need another 31 quadruple compressed dirt. That is equivalent to 203,391 dirt. So I'm going to need some faster method of collecting that dirt. And I have something in mind using blood magic. I'm very low on LP at the moment because I've been working on building some things on the side and getting myself some more slates and such. So, Blood Magic has within it what is called the Complex Spell System. If I look up Spell, I can see some of the components to it. These conduits are used to build custom spells. I'm not going to be covering all of them, but I am going to cover what I'm going to use to collect more dirt, which I don't even have a good snappy name for, but it is basically a spell that will easily allow me to level mountains and I'm going to take it into the nether with me and I'm going to gather all of the dirt that I need within minutes instead of hours and days. So to start that off the very first thing that you need to make a spell is going to be a spell crystal. Step one in getting that spell crystal and I don't know why I don't have any glass in fact make me Huh, do I have glass programmed into the furnace up here? If I do, then I'm just going to have it make me an awful lot of glass. I do. Excellent. And then I'm going to get out of the way before I collect more of this stuff. So, glass. I want lots. Go for it. Awesome. So to make myself the first part of the spell system... I need to put a bit of glass into my blood altar. That's going to use 2000 LP, which my system can provide for me passively very quickly, and create an unbound crystal. That unbound crystal now needs to be put into an alchemic chemistry set with diamond, gold, and two weak blood shards. So I'm going to grab my two weak blood shards, take this downstairs to my chemistry set. And this crystal will be both... Oh, good. I have gold right in there waiting for me. It will be both the um, binding point so that it knows to use your soul network and also it will be the item that you use in your inventory to cast this custom spell that you, we are creating. Now to make the spell itself I need to build a structure in the world and I'm going to be starting with the particle generator which uses a lot of custom items and is relatively complex. So let's get started building those items. And before I do, let's toss that potion back in to get filled up with the last four. 
So the stone brace is fairly easy. Just some iron and some reinforced slate. Oh, my slates and such are upstairs. Hold, please. In this crystal chest. There we go. Going to need all of my slates except for the demonic. I don't believe anything uses those. So iron plus reinforced slate gets me the stone braces. And I'm going to need quite a few of these, actually, because I need two here. I need more elsewhere. So I'm actually just going to toss a bunch of the reinforced slates in there and go through and craft that uh, so that I have the ability to craft them kind of as needed. I'm not going to set these up to auto craft because I'm not going to be mass producing these uh, items. I'm only going to be producing just enough to make this one spell. Also, I don't want to take the time to set up all of the infrastructure required to keep an endless stock of all of the different components involved. So, I'm also going to need a paradigm plate. This is made with reinforced slates, gold, and stone. And you need one of these per spell to make the paradigm block. There are a handful of paradigm blocks. If I look up blood magic, I can show you there is the particle generator, the self augmentator, and the melee aggregator. And I'll be using more of this in a future series. Right now I'm very focused on let's get this done. So I also need output spell cable. This uses simple catalyst, which I'm automatically producing lots, iron and stone. And I'm going to need the projectile core. This is a somewhat more complex one. It uses magic calories, which I've ta taught my system how to create which is made with redstone, gunpowder, glowstone, and simple catalyst. And it uses empty core, magician's blood orb, and arrows, and a weak blood shard. The empty core is created with simple catalyst, glass, iron, and gold. So that's not a problem. I'm going to need a few of these as well. So let's see, what do I need? I need to get my magician's blood orb is what I need. Which I should have one hanging out over here. I'm sure I have one somewhere. Let me just find it and I'll be right back. Couldn't find it in inventory, so I went and I, quote, found one, unquote, the hard way by making a new one. Less than fantastic, but when things go missing, just replace them. It's honestly faster. So, where was I? I was creating the particle generator, which uses the projectile core, which I have everything except the magician's blood orb, the empty core, and I didn't bring a weak blood shard with me which I have in here. I'm just going to hang on to all of those for the moment because I'm probably going to need a bunch more. Now, after this, we're going to get into a fair bit of alchemy to make everything work. Okay. You go there. You two go there. You go there. And the spell output cable goes here. Now I have my particle generator. Particle generator on its own does very, very little. Let's see, I can set up my spell over here in my ritual area. Yeah, we'll start building it right there. If I right click it with the orb, I can now see that, I mean the complex spell crystal, I can now see the coordinates of the spell that it is bound to, the dimension, and if I hold shift the recipe, it's not currently bound to me until I right click it on the air, and now I am the owner. If I go find something to shoot with this, let's say, one of my sheep, I can see that it does, whoops, nothing because I'm wearing the sigil of the whirlwind in my pants, which causes a lot of issues. Uh, what else am I losing? Nothing. Okay, good. So if I shoot a sheep with it, it does half a heart of damage. Not much on its own. However, the cost is also negligible. If I take a look at my divination sigil, fire it off, I actually gained more in the time that it took me to scroll the wheel and fire. Um, yeah. It's basically free. But it's basically also just punching something at range. You can do just as much damage with your bare fists. Not very great yet. Next item that we are going to create for it is going to be the Earth Former. This will give the projectile a special effect. The Earth Former is made with more of that output spell cable some input spell cable which is a more complex item because it uses blank slates and imbued slates in place of iron so blank and uh i know i have my imbued somewhere there we go imbued 
and it also uses four of those stone braces and a earthen core. Earthen core is created with uh, Tarai, diamond, weak blood shards, another one of those empty cores, your master blood orb, and your diamond, uh, and your two weak blood shards. There we go. Earthen core. Fantastic. One earth former. Now, this guy I'm going to have to take into the nether to demonstrate what it will do. The spell system is modular. I can now add the earthen core. Well, let me show you how this works first. I can add the earthen core. This side right here with no dots, which you can rotate around by holding shift and right clicking, that is the input face. And when I say no dots, I'm referring to the outside four corners. This side here that has the colored outside four corners is the output face. And you can rotate that around by right clicking without holding shift. You need the output face of each component to line up with the input face of the next component. And you can string your components in a line like that. At current, there are no splitters or anything, so every spell is going to be a very long single conduit so let's head over to the quarry and show you what the spell can do when it has just the two items in it right now the projectile former and the uh i mean the projectile generator and the earth former it's destroying dirt in a nice little two by three by three area that's not fantastic. I mean, that'll actually do a larger area than that even. It will do a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube. So that is 27 blocks of dirt removed from the world. It will work on other blocks as well. For example, if I blast this uh, nether sulfur with it, it, takes it all out. I don't know if it allows a chance for hellfish to spawn. It definitely does not allow a chance for the ores to... Oh, yep, definitely spawns hellfish. Fantastic. Let's get out of here. So that's, you know, maybe a good tunnel bore, but that's about it. Not very useful otherwise. Because what we're looking for right now is to gather the dirt, not destroy it. Well, if we want to gather the dirt, we're going to need to further augment that spell by adding more components. I need an environmental modify... Whoops. Environment. Spell. I know you can do it. And vi run. Anyway, the environmental spell modifier. This guy uses more of that input and output cable. I'm actually going to just make a few of each of these because I know I'm going to need a bunch. So for input cable, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think nine more will do it for the input and output cable that I need. I'm not 100% certain. We'll find out in just a moment. And then for the output cable, we will make the same amount. There we go. Now, this uses the environmental core and a whole bunch more stone braces. The environmental core is made with Orbis Terai, which is an upgraded version of the Terai using netherrack, sand, gunpowder, and a strengthened catalyst. The strengthened catalyst is made with two simple catalysts, some nether wart, and some bone meal. I've up, uh, upgraded my automatic blood alchemy system downstairs to produce for me the strengthened catalyst and the magic catalyst because I'm going to need to be using a lot of that later. If I head back upstairs, I'm going to need to get what I need to make the Orbis Terai, which consists of some of the Terai. I need four of these, I believe, to make the environmental core. Yes, I do. So, netherrack, sand, and gunpowder. Awesome. Whoops. Count. You can do it. Huh. I'm generating more sand from somewhere. I'm not even 100% certain where. It must just be the sludge boiler has um, actually generated a bit of a positive for once. So get these set up and then grab my strengthened catalyst, which I have happily resting in my system, being produced by the automated alchemy. 
So I'll come back once I have those together. All right, folks, I am back with everything I needed to make that environmental core, my four Orbis Terai, and it's another empty core, weak blood shard, magician's blood orb, all of the good stuff. And if I take a look at my environmental spell modifier, I should be able to create that now. Oh, nope, I don't have my stone braces created quite yet. I'm going to make a whole bunch of these. In fact, I'm going to need to set up to make even more of these because I know that I'm going to need them. And to do that, if you remember, you can set your item duct to output with a whitelist on reinforced slates. Let me check my current amount of LP in the network. Eh, over a million should be enough to afford to run a collection of blank slates through. Just going to wait for that to fill up. Does not take very long. So that'll get me another stack full of those reinforced slates. I've taken the liberty of setting up on the side some more alchemy ingredients that needed creation. Specifically, Reductus, using this recipe with carrots, redstone, soul sand, gold, and the strength and catalyst. Potentia, using lapis, nether quartz, glowstone, and strength and catalyst. And Virtus, using coal, gunpowder, redstone, and strength and catalyst. Now, if I take this environmental spell modifier and I place it on my spell chain, I right-click to move the output facing that way, and I shift-right-click to move this plate-looking guy as the input facing towards the output of my earth former. Now let's go to the nether and show you what I can do with the environmental. So, where is my crystal? There's my complex spell crystal. Now if I go down, whoops, these guys are still not despawned. I'm just going to run away from them. It'll be a little bit easier in the long run than trying to deal with them all. We will come down here to where the first place I had my... Uh, what's it called again? The arcane boar set up. If I fire my projectile now at the wall, well, it's going to dig out a little bit of it, and it's going to drop the dirt. That's what the environmental modifier does for me. It affects a much smaller area now, and it will only dig horizontally, but if I'm looking to, you know, make a tunnel and actually keep what comes out of the tunnel, it's possible. It's not perfect. It's not 100%. This is a little bit unreliable in what direction everything goes, but it is possible, and that's the important part at the moment. So, let's head back home and see what we can do to expand the area that that spell is going to affect. And there are a couple of things that we can do to upgrade our spell in a fairly significant way. And those are the reinforced spell empowerer, spell dampener, and augmenter. I'm not 100% certain on the difference between the Augmenter and the Empower. They both increase the effects of the spell. One of them increases the area of effect. One of them causes it to... Well, one of it kind of causes it to chain in a sort of way. I know that with both of them, you affect the largest area. And the spell dampener reduces the costs. I'm not as worried about the spell dampener, so I'm not going to worry, uh, get that set up immediately. But I am going to get the spell Augmenter and the spell Empowerer set up. And the reason I want to use the reinforced version of these as opposed to the unstable or standard versions, the imbued and demonic versions do not currently have recipes as of this version of Blood Magic. I believe they're coming in the future. Is I can add up to three reinforced spell Empowerers. I can only have one unstable, but it's pretty cheap uses wooden braces and cracked runic plates. Wooden braces are just made with wooden string, and the cracked runic plates are just a couple of imbued slates and a concentrated catalyst. However, if I want to make the reinforced, I'm going to need to use imbued runic plates and obsidian braces. The obsidian braces are made with a stone brace and two more reinforced slates each. For a total of five reinforced slate per obsidian braced, which is 20 slates per empowerer or per reinforced spell enhancer, or a total of 60 plates for a full set of these. Now, the, I'm sorry, not plates, slates, yes. It also uses the imbued runic plate. To make the imbued runic plate, I need two runic plate, an aquasolus, an incendium, and a magic chaos, all of which are being mass-produced. 
the runic plates use a cracked runic plate and a terai, which is being mass produced. So I'm going to set up my cracked runic plates to mass produce so that I have a bunch of, the, oh, actually these use imbued slates. I'm not going to be able to set those up to mass produce. They require far too rare of a resource because I do not have a way of mass producing the imbued slates just yet. Luckily, I have a whole bunch of them on hand. So if I need two of the imbued runic plates per spell, uh, per reinforced spell uh, modifier, and I want to use six of these for the effect, three of the spell empower and three of the spell augmentator, then I'm going to need 12 of these imbued runic plates, which is 24 runic plates. So 24 cracked runic plates or a total of 48 imbued slates, which is basically every imbued slate that I have. I'm also going to need to create myself a bunch of this concentrated catalyst, which is a strengthened catalyst, a gold nugget, and a fractured bone. Fractured bone is made with four bones and some gunpowder. So I've got a lot of alchemy ahead of me. I'm going to get, start getting these recipes set up. And I am going to do a little bit of mass production. Uh, actually, I only need one stack of bone because it creates four fractured bone per recipe. So that means I only need 16 gunpowder. This will go fast at least. Get my bone recipe set up. Fantastic. And then over here, I can set up my, to start creating the concentrated catalyst. I'm going to need my catalyst. I'm just going to make a whole bunch of it because it's easier. And I'm going to need gold nuggets, which my system knows how to craft for me. So I need another 56. Begin. Fantastic. And I'll be back once these are done processing. As it is. Just like that. And it starts working. See you soon. All right, wanted to show you setting up these recipes real quick. I've got a bunch of concentrated and strengthened catalysts. I'm going to get the cracked runic plate set up real quick, which is just a couple of imbued slates, concentrated catalyst. I'm actually going to use an entire stack of imbued slates for this, and then some, because I have a lot of these things that I want to... You know what? Come on, work for me here. There you go. Now if I drag across, there. 56. Good. That'll be enough to get a good start on things. And then include the concentrated catalyst. That starts processing. Move a little bit more over because I'm going to need it. Grab my cracked runic plates. Those are processed using some terai, which I have a bunch of because my system is mass producing it for me downstairs. So I'll just grab a whole stack, get that going. Crack runic plate and terai to make runic plate. Crack runic plate, terai to make runic plate. Oh, I need the Archmage's Blood Orb to uh, improve it. All right, then. Hmm. Do I want to take my only Archmage's Blood Orb out of there? Yeah, my system looks full at the moment, so it'll be okay for a little while. This is why I like doing these things on camera, because I run into unexpected difficulties. And then you get to share them with me. Keep things moving, going from one chemistry set to the next. It is entirely possible to set up a fully automated chain of all of this if you are willing to build multiple blood altars to do it. All right, so the runic plates, you can use these to make the standard spell uh, modifiers, or you can include them with aquasalis, magicalis, and incendium, all of which I have. Uh, I think if I look up alchemy, I should get everything, and I do. Good. Magicalis, incendium, aquasalis, grab a stack of each. Get it all in there. Well, almost a stack of uh, Incendium, apparently. Uh, Aquasalis, Magicalis. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing the, uh, any of this correctly. And once again, I need the Archmage's Blood Orb. So you know what? We're going to go make a new one. Assuming I have the Demon Shard, which I don't. Hmm. All right. Let me go get myself a new Demon Shard using my guy over there, and I'll be back in a moment. All right, so maybe I went a little overboard on creating extra Archmage's Blood Orbs, but you know what? Go bigger, or go home. It didn't take very long. Like, surprisingly not long at all. So, 
Uh, it's probably time to start retiring the Master's Blood Orbs in here anyway, so that I can make everything with Archmage's Blood Orbs. Because I am now an Archmage. Yeah, this makes sense. Alright. Plenty of imbued runic plates now being created. I th is that the top tier? That is the top tier. That's all I needed. Awesome. And if I take a look at my terminal, I have plenty of reinforced slates waiting for me to make more of these stone braces. So, uh, hmm, you know what? I'm going to teach my system how to make some of this stuff for me because I don't want to have to remember the exact numbers and count. Apparently, I've proven I am very bad at the counting lately. So, let's tell my system how to make exactly what I'm going for. So, the reinforced spell empowerer, which... I'm going to be supplying everything for that. Yeah. I'm going to get all of this taught to my system so that I don't have to do anything manually at all except feed it enough of various components, which I will will do through my alchemy, and I'll be back. All right. I taught a whole bunch of the reinforced stuff to, well, the reinforced spell in power and the reinforced spell augmenter to my AE system. So now if I look up reinforced and I tell it to make me three of the empowerers and three of the augmenters, I can now keep an eye on those and see, oh, you're missing a master blood orb. Well, system here, have a master blood orb. And if I go back, it has not yet realized that it has what it needs. Oh, it doesn't have weak blood shards or imbued runic plates in there. No problem. Now it has weak blood shards. And now it needs imbu imbued runic plates. Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to make sure that these patterns right here, because these are the ones that use the blood orb, you have to teach them that it uses one owned by you, or else it'll try to use a generic one that's not owned by anyone, and it won't work. There we go. Now if I add those back, I'm going to need to cancel these jobs and give it the imbued runic plates, but it should be able to function now. And I will need a total of 12 imbued runic plates, and I already have 11. Fantastic. This is actually quite a bit of fun setting all this up. Okay, imbued runic plate. And look for reinforced. Grab three of you. And three of you. That is fantastically awesome. That used a lot of my reinforced slate. I'm going to need to have to make... I'm going to have to make a lot more of that stuff. That's okay. This is a resource-intensive process. But the results will be worth it. So just need to wait for that one more runic plate. I can drop that in the system. Grab my reinforced spell empower and spell augmenter. So you might be wondering exactly what is worth this kind of time and resource investment. Well, now I can finally show you. So we're actually going to go just like that. And we're going to put the input to the right on all of these. The output on these two is going to go to the left. The add output on that one can go right up into there. The input's already on the bottom, so I need the output on each of these to go to the right and the input to go to the left. And now I have my conduit chain, which is now my environmental spell modifier on my earth former is being improved by three spell augmenters and three spell empowerers. Let's go to the nether at our quarry site and show you exactly how empowered and augmented that is. And you know what? I want to kill, maybe I want to kill some of these. So there's just the one left. Nope. There's a few of them. Okay. I'll deal with them later. In fact, if I just hang out way over here for a while, they should all deal with themselves. In any case, so this no longer, I mean, it says it's a projectile, but it no longer really functions properly as a projectile because as you can see, it's, di whoa, um, hang on, dug the floor out right from underneath me. Okay. But if I fire this over there, it still digs right close to me. So I'm going to use my flight potion to make sure that I can stay airborne during this process. And I'm actually going to grab out my woven digger supply bag to show you why I'm doing this. So you might think that, well, you know what? Don't you have the bound shovel? 
I, I do. But the bound shovel cannot move quite this fast. If I get nice into this corner right here, and I give it a right click, I gained a whole stack off of each right click. This is digging at warp speed. And this isn't even as good as it gets. Like, this is pretty intense, but I can do better. I mean, I've already filled up one backpack and almost another. I'm going to need a lot of backpacks to make this move at an efficient speed. So, as I was doing with the bound shovel before, I'm going to tuck everything into this crystal chest so it will get dumped into my tesseract over time. I might actually need some more output for this to be able to keep up with what I'm going to be doing. You know what? Get rid of the fence as well. So now, how am I going to upgrade this further? Isn't it already as good as it gets? Well, no, actually. What I can do now is I can add an extra effect onto the end of it. Because why have it have one effect when I can make it have a couple of effects? And the next effect that I'm going to add is going to be the wind generator, which is made with stone brace, output cable, gold ingot, and a gusty core, which is just aether, weak blood shard, diamond, magician blood orb. Very simple stuff. So let me get one of those built real quick. Gusty core needs the empty core. Should have that already, actually. I do not. So if I look up core, tell it to craft me one because it can do that now without my intervention. And I'm missing the magician's blood orb. Simple enough. Awesome. And I need the braces. So there we go. If I take this wind generator and I put it on the end of the spell that I already have, right there, shift right click to move the input and right click to move the output, and I go back to my quarry. Now we are approaching maximum awesomeness. It can still get slightly better than this when I augment the wind, but if I right click, whoops, ow. Accidentally uh, broke some nether rack there uh, and got myself some nether lapis. Cool. But you may notice that a lot of the items are flying straight to me, even without the bound chest plate on. Oops, need to get down a bit. Oh, you know what? I'm wearing the leggings. That's why things are working weird. But yes, so I can fire forward and I am still gathering dirt. Like I have 10 now. Oh, it's barely working because I'm generating so much dirt at once. However, this is going to, in fact, allow me to gather the stuff at range. I'm going to have to put those augmenters and empowerers onto the wind before I can really show you what this is capable of. Let me go do that, and I will be back in a bit. Alrighty, there's the fully assembled spell, conduit, matrix, whatever you call it. Six... Uh, well, three augmenters and three empowerers on the environmental earth former. Oh, that's what I forgot. Hmm. Hang on. I need an environmental effect, which I do not have at current. So, let's get that built. And to do that, I'm going to need to make cables, braces, all of it. No problem. My system knows how to make this for me. Cable. So I need an output and an input. Awesome. And I need the environmental core, which will use that Orbis Terai, which I don't have any of. Blast. All right, be right back. That's more like it. Get this all put together. There. So if you need to edit a spell, you can very simply break one block and insert another. Let's get that set up and add that empowerer back onto the end. There we go. Now, if I take this into my nether quarry, let me show you the power of my new fully operational spell. The great thing about having the wind on there, I don't have to go chasing after, after the drops. 
as you can see, they all come to me. So all I need to do is blast massive amounts of the uh, area, and I'm collecting tons of dirt very, very quickly. This is going to be how I finish this quest in a very short period of time. Unfortunately, that period of time is going to have to happen off camera because we are out of time. I hope you've enjoyed this first introduction to the blood magic spell system and what you can do with it. This is, might be the coolest um, digging device I've ever seen. Like I could, you can become your own quarry if you have enough storage space with the backpacks. So if I check my divination signal, I'm at 9,260,000 odd. If I fire this off a few times, uh, yeah, that cost about 10, uh, no, that cost quite a bit of power. Yeah, about 10 or 15-ish. So it's not cheap, but something this powerful shouldn't be, in my opinion. So, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please leave a thumbs up, let me know. If you've not, leave a thumbs down, tell me. Um, I'm pretty sure that I will be able to get an episode out for Monday. It may be late, but uh, one will definitely exist. So, I will see you next time.